Alrighty, here we are, folks, and it is time once again for some brush goodness. Ooh, we love it. The fall 2023 brushes are here, ready for you to play with. They are available worldwide. I know I waited a little while to do this. They were available last week worldwide, but you know, they were available in North America a little while before that. Didn't want to do a live stream until everybody could check them out. And besides, we also had the max craziness, everybody tuning in over there. So time to settle in. You're all inspired. You want to make some art. Now you can do some drawing with some fresh new brushes. And guess what, gang? I just delivered the winter 2024 brushes to the team yesterday. And those will be out for you in the middle of December. So they're right around the corner. Brushes are raining down upon us all. Okay, so glad you're all here. Um, now, let's say hi to some folks in the chat. We've got Cody, we've got Rick. You know, Rick, I never knew your name because it was always Z by HP, but now I know you are. Um, Frank is here, hello, and Afroha. All these friendly faces joining us, people that I've seen in these streams many times. And Robert, thank you for being here. RB, Rika, nice to see you as well. From Denmark, Denmark. I used to fly through Copenhagen all the time when I was a kid. Lived in Pakistan and Karachi, and we would stop over in Copenhagen on the way back to the United States to see relatives. So there you go. What do you think about that? Alrighty, we're not going to draw the Little Mermaid today, though. We are going to draw a little fall seam. We're going to use the fall brushes for that, of course. And let's take a look at those brushes right now. Here we go. Um, so we are going to be taking a look at Photoshop. I've got the little fall 23 brushes preview image right here for you. As usual, all the illustrations I create for the placeholders for these brushes are created, in fact, with that particular brush set. How nice. Um, now, where do you get the brushes? Oh my gosh, don't worry. Here's your brushes panel, okay? And if you just wander over to this little corner, there is a hamburger menu, that's what we call that, and it's very small. Why don't we make these bigger? Come on, Adobe. We need to make these things more obvious. When you open Photoshop, there should be a big, fat, brightly colored message that says, hey, you over there, if you like drawing and painting, you have access to over 2,000 brushes. Unfortunately, we tuck it away in this tiny little drop-down menu all the way over here, get more brushes. Now I know, it's not ideal, it's kind of hidden, but there it is, now you know where it is. You tap on that, it's gonna open up the page where you download the brushes, and of course, this is what that looks like. Now I'm over here in Deutschland, but I can just tap United States or do whatever I want. And here we have a thousand brushes and look at that new release, fall 2023 brushes. That's what you want, gang. Just download that and then you will install it easily into Photoshop by doing the following. Here we are back in Photoshop. All you do is you go over to that same little drop down menu and right here you have the option to import brushes. And when you tap on that, you simply navigate to where you have just saved that ABR file. That's the brush file. You double click on that and boom, voila, it shows up right here in Photoshop and you're all set, ready to draw and paint. There you go. And thanks Cody for including those instructions right there in the chat. Very much appreciate that as well. Rika says, you've already tried the brushes and they're great. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you like them. That's awesome. That makes me happy. Uh, I like people to know and like what's out there. Okay, so moving on. Here we go. We are going to now do some drawing and painting with these brushes. Let's take a look at what they do, all right? Open up a little document here, 1800 pixels square. It's pretty much a decent size. And maybe if I do an okay drawing, I could post it later on social. And if I don't, who cares? Let's check it out. So fall 2023, these are the brush sets we want to look at, starting with the pop drag brush. Pop drag, what's this? Ooh wee look at that. Kyle, where do you come up with these names? I don't know. Sometimes they just pop into my head. What do you think about that? All right, so this brush, once again, very good for textural elements. Now you might be wondering, what do I do with this? Well, I can always show you some examples like I like to do. For example, let's do this. Let's take the brush and let's pull it from right to left, like so. Bum, 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 bum. Using less pressure as I move towards the top here. Okay, like that. There we go. And you'll notice it's going to follow the direction of the brush. Now, let's amp up the pressure here in the foreground. And what do you know? What do you know? We've just created a nice grassy landscape right there using just one brush. And the key here is the pressure that we're using. Okay. When I say pressure, I mean the pressure I'm exerting with the stylus here on the canvas. 
lighter pressure as I move upwards, okay, because I'm suggesting that we're moving backwards in space, heavier pressure here in the foreground. Now just go ahead and grab a slightly darker color and hit it here in the foreground a bit more, okay? Go even darker for a bit more contrast. Throw a few little details in there. And that's really all you gotta do. I can use my lasso tool, one of my favorite tools ever invented, right? We all love the lasso tool. If you're looking for a cool stream about the lasso tool, I did one a couple years ago where I did an illustration with nothing but the lasso tool and filling with solid color. And boy, you wouldn't believe what you can do with just that technique. We're gonna, whoops, uh, add another layer underneath there and we're gonna fill that in. We make that a bit lighter. And there is your cool grassy landscape using that brush in combination over a flat color, okay? Very cool effect. All right, so that's the pop drag brush. What else could you do with it? Well, you can add texture to anything you like. You could add it to fur, maybe for an animal, or maybe a, the bark of a tree, or something along those lines. Looks like a forest on a mountainside, says Peter. Well, hey, all right, Alessandra's here. Nice to see you, thanks for joining us. Uh, trees really far away, absolutely, could be that as well. The orientation is vertical in the natural drawing position on your screen. How do I rotate it to be horizontal? That's the question coming from Rick. Rick, if that is the case for you when you are drawing with a brush, okay, and my guess is that you are right-handed and so it's probably winding up doing that, no worries. Go over here to your brush settings, okay? Brush settings, if you don't see brush settings, make sure you go to window, brush settings, and make sure the little check mark there, okay? And you just want to, in this very first option here, brush tip shape, tap on that, and here you can rotate the brush. Ba-boom, okay? Change the angle, ba-boom change the angle. If you hold down the shift key, you're gonna move in increments of 15 degrees, all right? If you wanna be precise about what that is, you can also always come in and actually enter a value manually under angle right there, okay? All right, so that'll take care of that for you. And then of course, if that's what you want it to be set as, you can in your brushes, go ahead and hit this little plus sign and save a variation of the brush just for you that has the correct orientation so that you can always access it when you need it. Moving on to the asphalt pull. Now, when I think of asphalt, I think of skateboarding because that's what something I was doing a lot as a kid. Loved to skateboard and when you had fresh asphalt, oh my goodness, you could skate so far on one push and it was really fun. Don't do it now because, you know, the wrist is the money maker and I don't wanna be breaking any wrists and not being able to draw again. Let's take a look at this brush though. And right away, I'm sure you can see why it was called this, because it does have that sort of feel of asphalt, okay? Um, you know, nice tarry road, roadway. Uh, but again, this is a good textural brush and you can do all kinds of things with it. Now, one thing you might not think about doing, but I always like to show you stuff you might not think about, watch this. Go ahead and make it tiny. I'm gonna make it 30 pixels and hey, boy howdy, what do you have here? You have a really cool, inking tool. Look at this. We'll zoom in. It's got all this nice variation in the um, the values there, okay? Like a nice gritty look to it, okay? And you can get super dark by just piling it on. Another cool thing you can do, make it slightly larger, and if you get your lines close to one another, like so, okay, every now and again you're going to get a couple of little spattery bits that just pop out, okay? And that even adds to the charm and the fun of this brush. So this brush, even though it is used for large textural stuff most of the time, you can use it for inking, you can use it for drawing and get some really neat looking line work. So don't forget, all these brushes can be resized, up, down, whichever way you wanna go. And that's gonna give you a different result and maybe give you a tool that you hadn't thought about using. But all right, back to its uh, default size. We'll hit that back up again, it's 500 pixels. Um, there you go, you know, this is just, so much fun. Look at the spatter that happens on the outside edges of the stroke that you make. This is one of those things you could take advantage of if you were looking for uh, drawing some something that doesn't have to be super clean. All right, so maybe you've already got an edge of something. Let's go ahead and just throw something in there. I've got this edge of a shape that I've drawn. I take the brush and I just hit along the edge like this, bam, bam, bam. Okay, just to throw a bit of spatter out there. And now, all of a sudden, look what you've got. You've got this shape with a nice hard edge over here. Then on this side, you've got all this textural craziness happening, okay, as a result of using that brush. So you can see how you can play with your edges, right? And we talk a lot about this with traditional painting, soft edge, hard edge, right, edge control, and so on. 
this of course in a digital environment and you can also add um, texture and things like that to create a kind of soft edge, right? Um, you could even have a transition from one color to another using this and have it be like a gradation, but with more character and more personality, okay? Stuff to think about. Don't forget also that any of these brushes can be used as an eraser. Now there are two ways to do that. If you have a North American keyboard set up, you can use the tilde key. The tilde key looks like this, okay, on your keyboard. Um, it's a little sort of a swooshy um, curly Q thing. Uh, but uh, if you don't have that and if it's not gonna work for that function, uh, don't worry about it. You can always take any brush come right up over here to where your brush modes are and set it to clear, okay? So for example, we go back to our asphalt pull brush and under mode we say clear. We are now gonna use the brush as an eraser. See that? Same texture, same behaviors, et cetera, but now it's all gonna function as an eraser. So this also gives you some really cool additive and subtractive options for when you're drawing and painting with brushes that have a lot of texture and a lot of personality. You can instantly convert them to an eraser as needed. Now, if you are using a North American keyboard, as I mentioned before, you do the same thing by, if I move this back to normal for my brush mode, by holding down that tilde key. So if I hold down that tilde key, I'm gonna get that brush to turn into eraser. Now I'm back to brushing, hold down the tilde key. Now I'm back to erasing. This is extremely satisfying and cool. Alrighty, moving on. We have the busted pen. I was just using that a moment ago. And what is it? Well, of course, it's a busted pen. So the kind of pen that just isn't reliable anymore to create a nice smooth line, you've just beaten it all the heck, but that is sometimes desirable, right? Now this will, of course, give you a, a variation in your line width based on pen pressure. So very, very, very fine pressure. Not only am I going to get a fine line, let's zoom in on this for a second, but I'm also going to get some nice breaks, okay, where there's no ink deposited at all, all right? And these are perfectly random, which is something I love in creating brushes. I don't want there always to be a really evident um, stamp pattern, right? I want there to be this feeling that things are happening haphazardly and there's some random goodness going on. So for those of you who like to draw with a lot of character and have a broken sort of line, I think this is going to suit your style. It's Halloween time. Let's let's draw a little Halloween kitty. Ooh, let's do this like that and get those eyes out to the side. See how fun it is to do something like this with a brush that has all kinds of personality. Every line just slightly different from the last. Okay, I love it. Boom, boom. I had cats when I was growing up. The thing is, I'm allergic to cat dander as I am with dogs as well. And as much as I'd love to still have a cat, it's just not worth all the pain and suffering on my part. But they are my favorite animal to draw. Cats are, as my aunt Bobby once said to me, the most decorative animals. And I know exactly what she means. You look at a cat sitting anywhere, lying down anywhere, and they just make that space look better, don't they? They are decorative animals. So. There's our putty tat. Give him some nasty, sort of mean eyebrows though, because it's a mean kitty. There you go, all right. Um, question from YouTube. Are the brushes available for Fresco 2 as usual for EU countries? Absolutely, yes they are, of course. They are available if you have any Fresco subscription of any kind, that could be even the Fresco Solo plan for iPad, which only costs $9.99 per year. Talk about a great deal you have access to all the brushes. And they always come out at the same time. In fact, sometimes in Fresco, the brushes come out sooner than they do in Photoshop. The schedules are a little wonky that way. There's your answer. Um, all right, uh, this is the new PS2024 that you can change that key, says Robert. Really? I didn't know that. You can change the key. Folks, Robert is giving us some very interesting information on the Euro keyboard. Change the shortcut key to the whatever that is. I don't know what that's called. Um, it looks like this. I'll just draw it for you all so that I can help you out. Ba-bum. Uh, Ba-bum. Uh, what the heck is that thing? Somebody help me out. Um, whatever that is on the keyboard, apparently you can use that to turn your brush into an eraser on a Euro keyboard. So there you go. Um, let's see. All right. Are the brushes available? Yes. Okay. Bottom of your internet. Excellent. All right. We're all good. 
Moving on, uh, let's check out the great paintbrush. Why is it called great paint? Well, I'll tell you why. This brush, now I wish I could reverse engineer this, and I, of course I can, I can just look and see what I did, but there's something I did here with these settings that, oh my gosh, it's just so satisfying to paint with this thing, and I'm gonna have to make several variations of this because I really love the way this feels. Now, unlike a lot of my other paint brushes, you really don't need any pressure at all to lay down a nice chunk of paint, okay? You can really just, but I can, of course, use lighter pressure and get a little less opacity, and a slightly thinner mark. Um, but what I really enjoy about this brush is the color dynamics are really subtle. And when I say color dynamics, I mean a variation in the hue, saturation, and value of whatever color you have chosen. And that's going to be changing slightly along the length of the stroke that you paint. All right, and um, you can really see this clearly if you zoom in a bit. So we'll just go ahead and give ourselves a little jack-o'-lantern here. And I'll paint that shape right there. Bump, 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 bump. And uh, let's just zoom in for a moment and let's study what's going on. You can see evidence of the outside edges of each brush stroke, okay? Slightly lighter, slightly darker, slightly more or less saturated. And that's all thanks to the color dynamics settings that are being employed. All right, now don't forget when you're using a brush like this, right? It's quite large. I make these brushes large so that you can do bigger paintings. Um, do not forget your best friends, the bracket keys on your keyboard, which will size the brush up or down. They will size the brush up or down. And so in an instance like this, I say, cool, I'm having fun with this brush. I don't want to change it up. I go for a darker color. I just make the brush smaller with the bracket key and then paint in my little pumpkin uh, stem, okay? Like so, get that in place. And uh, by doing this, Right? I get all the same characteristics of that brush, only now I'm getting them at a slightly smaller size so I have more control over whatever it is I'm trying to do. Okay, and then I can do this kind of paint in, paint out kind of thing. Paint in, paint out, paint in, paint out, blah, blah, blah. Excellent, all right. Uh, but yeah, resize your brushes. Do not feel stuck like you can't do that, right? It's gonna make a big difference. You're gonna wanna have the ability to do that. Okay, we'll paint around there. I can get tighter, I can get looser, depending on pressure I use, etc. All right, but this is really a good painterly kind of brush. If you're into that kind of look and need that for your work, um, the great paint is going to help you out. You're going to enjoy it. And it's going to add a little personality to the brush strokes because of that color dynamic setting. Um, and I think you'll really, really enjoy that. Uh, if you're not used to painting with color dynamics, just know that they're extremely adjustable, okay? Just like everything else, everything can be tweaked, everything can be personalized, right? The brushes are great out of the box, if I do say so myself, but of course, everybody wants to have their own settings for certain things that they do, the way that they make marks, the way that they paint, all right? If that's the case, you just go over to your brush settings, and under color dynamics, you can adjust all of these settings for hue, saturation, and brightness jitter, okay? totally adjustable, and then as I said before, go ahead and make a new brush for yourself, and that will be your version of the brush that does what you want it to do, okay? Excelente, Reverb Mike is here. What's up, Reverb Mike? Thanks for joining us. Hey, hey, hey. I see Patrick's here. Cool. Oh, this brush is so cool. I love it. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. And Evie is here as well. Cool, cool, cool. Nice to see you. All right, so that's the great paint. Moving on to the Silo brush. Um, now, Silo is really not how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's supposed to be pronounced Silo. Okay, but I say silo. But really, this is a silo brush. Why do I call it that? Aha, well, for those of you who've done concept art for character development and things like that, um, character design, then you're familiar with this silhouette technique, silo, okay, where you just bust out a silhouette uh, for a character, okay? And that becomes your starting point uh, for a design of some kind, all right? And the cool thing about this method is I love to do this, hold down that tilde key and then carve away, okay, at it. And that's how you get to this point where you're doing this additive subtractive thing really fast. It's, it's a very cool way of, of designing and, and uh, building uh, characters, okay? Now the other thing you can do is you can have your foreground and background colors be black and white, and you can just hit the X key to go back and forth between black and white. So instead of erasing, you're actually adding white paint. Again, that's the X key on the keyboard. 
Same thing, it's gonna toggle your foreground and background color. You can see that happening over here on the left. Toggle, 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 okay? Um, but it, so if you wanna do it that way without erasing, you just wanna use the X, whatever, that's cool. You can do it that way as well. Um, but yeah, I could, I could totally design a whole character silhouette this way, okay? And we come in here and again with the with the tilde, boom, 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 boom. I want this this to be like some kind of robot thing with these skinny mini le legs here, and then a big chunky foot of some kind down here. Boom, 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 boom. Something like that. Okay. We don't know. It's so fun to just play back and forth and back and forth until you get something that you feel good about, okay? Now, this is gonna respond to pen pressure, so it's gonna go big, it's gonna go small, really fast, depending on um, how much pressure you're using, okay? And I can just keep playing with these shapes until I feel like I've got something cool. And then what you can do is you can come in inside, okay, go ahead and make the brush a little smaller, go ahead and hold that tilt key down, or go ahead and use the X key and swap back and forth between black and white. If you wanna use white, I can just erase as well. You can start adding little details here to sort of suggest a bit more what's going on here. Okay. Like so, so this, this is method is extremely common for anybody who's done this kind of work, knows what I'm talking about, okay? Boom, 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 boom. You get the idea. All right, silhouette, cool, silo brush. That's how it works, Terps. So there are three versions of this. There's um, Terps, Terps 2, Terps Flex. Now each of these is gonna give you a nice sort of uh, coating of the canvas with what appears to be oil paint that has been really thinned out. See what I mean? And that's all it is. Get a nice canvas texture coming through. You get sort of these wet edges, okay? A little bit of transparency. All right, so if that's what you're looking for and you want to start an underpainting that way, great. Terps too, similar, but a bit more bristly. See that? More bristly. See the evidence of the bristles as I paint with it. Terps Flex, let's take a look at that one. Terps Flex is going to be Okay, a brush that gives you a different canvas pattern, but also can go a lot thinner when you rotate the brush, okay? And what it's doing is it's responding to the angle at which I'm holding my stylus, and that's gonna give you that, okay? Uh, Evie says, I sketch first, then color later. I always forget the add, subtract, painting style option. Uh, you know, something, something new to try. You can always try that. Jacqueline says, I like this one in all caps. I assume that means you really like it. Cool. There you go. Um, but yeah, this is a good brush. If you, if you want to like kind of emulate the way you work traditionally, going thin to thick, working with a little, or just getting a backdrop, pardon me, getting a, a base color down, getting a base color down and then painting on top of that, having it come through a little bit, whatever you want. Um, lots of ways to work with that. Gravel ink, what is this? Another lovely inking tool with a lot of nice gravelly texture, hence the name. Um, this is a great one for those of you who are emulating traditional uh, drawing with um, with an inking tool. It's just going to give you enough variety um, in the, the lines so that it doesn't feel too clean, too smooth. Depends on what you're going for, but that could be the kind of thing that some people really want. Um, you know, that's going to be good for you. So, I don't know, depending on, on what it is you're, you're doing. A little spidey, maybe. Woo! Okay. I'm all spidey. Excited about spidey. I had a opportunity to give a little presentation um, at a conference recently and, and met the insanely talented and, and friendly um, production supervisor for, uh, for Into the Spider-Verse, um, Mr. Uh, Patrick O'Keefe. Really cool dude. Nice guy. Got me all into Spidey again. All right. Okie dokie. What else we have? Fall Bunchy. Well, we know what this is. Let's go ahead and change the color because you know what's coming. Aha, color dynamics again for these nice fall leaves. And these are the leaves that I used, uh, this brush I used rather, pardon me, if you just jump over here, you can see right here for those fall leaves right there. And the technique I'm employing there is using a dark color and then a light color on top, right? So what you do is you just go ahead and go for a dark color, 
put some leaves down, boom, boom, boom. Okay, lighter pressure means slightly smaller leaves, more gaps in between, right? And then go ahead and just brighten that up and hit over the top of it like so. And that just gives you the illusion of there being more depth of, you know, there's like leaves on top of leaves on top of leaves on top of leaves. You can even go one lighter with your values and hit a few of those, just a few spots. Bam, 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 bam. And that really does a good job creating that pile, you know? Charcoal 23, what's that all about? Well, I mean, the name kind of gives it away. It's a charcoal kind of tool, a charcoal pencil kind of a thing. Now, this one's going to respond again to tilt. Okay, so if, I, if I'm going to tilt my pen, okay, more towards a perpendicular, uh, parallel, pardon me, parallel orientation, okay, to the drawing surface, that's going to make it slightly wider. All right, so I could do this if I want and color like I'm using a charcoal stick. And you'll see what that does is it makes it wider, okay? But if I'm holding it more perpendicular, it's going to be more narrow, okay, like that. But of course, pressure will also have some impact on this. And pressure will also, of course, have an impact on how light the mark is uh, that you make, okay? So this is just a good charcoal drawing tool. Try it out. Really good for, you know, a little mark here, a little mark there, just to add a bit of personality to something. Um, the Papa Ink brush is for those smooth inking fans out there, okay? Those people who are like, you know what? I want something smooth. I want to go thick to thin, and I want it to be smooth as butter. Well, here's your new friend, the Papa Ink, okay? That one's going to do it for you. Pure chaos. What on earth is this thing? Well, I don't know. You tell me. There's your answer, all right? Now, what do I do with something like that? Well, this is one of those brushes I feel like, you know, you could just sort of stab at the canvas here and there occasionally and just make a little crazy mess. Um, but you could also use it inside of selections. And we talk about this a lot where I make a selection, right, of some kind, and fill it with a color, right? And then we go to a different color and inside there, we just add a bit of texture with a brush like this, right? And what you've just done is you've created an interesting textural element to an otherwise totally flat shape. Um, and this is one of those brushes that can do that quite nicely for you. And as usual, you can have it break out here and there. And so we'll have that edge, right? But then we'll have something breaking out. You know, you could do a lot of cool abstract work this way. It could be good for designing a background for something, a containment shape for some design. Who knows? The sky's the limit. New Painter is mm, just like, you know, the, we had the great paint. New Painter is going to have even more subtle color dynamics. Okay, even more subtle than before, and super nice, painty, chunky marks. Now with New Painter, you're not going to get any real variation with the opacity. Okay, this is for thick painting. So when you're painting with this, you have to be thinking ahead of time, like, all right, well, I can't really go and do a transition using pen pressure. So the way I'm going to have to do it is more with like mark making. So, you know, if I want to go from one color to another, let's say, for example, I have this color over here. And I say, okay, I want to blend between these two. I have to look at my color wheel and think about how I'm going to do that, right? To kind of more subtly make my way over there to get to that color, right? Boom, boom. And I'm going to kind of kick it back over this way in between, that kind of thing. And then once I've got those colors down, start just kind of playing around um, with brush strokes and going slightly darker, slightly lighter, et cetera, to try and get to where I can make some kind of a transition. So it's a different way of working, and you have to give it some thought, right? Um, but don't worry, you always have a cheat in your back pocket with Photoshop. And what is it? Starts with an S, ends with a D, G, E. Who knows, who knows? It's the smudge tool, okay? So if I grab that smudge tool, now you know what I can do, right? If I do have those two colors side by side, right? Boom, 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 boom. And I say, ah, oh, man, I really want to mix those, but I don't want to go to all this trouble. Grab that smudge tool, boom, 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 and just mix them together. And use a smudge tool that's got a little bit of, you know, texture to it and things like that if you want it to feel more like what you've got going on here. Smudge tools are brush settings tools, so you can come into your brush settings. You can go ahead and select, right? See that? I can select different brush shapes for my smudge tool. I can change the scattering, et cetera, okay? Things like that, which means if I come back here to what I just painted, 
and now use this smudge tool, I'm gonna to get different results, okay? You can also change the strength, bump it up to something like 90 or somewhere in that vicinity and you're gonna get a much crazier result. More painty painty, okay? Play around with the smudge tool. Here's a tip for you. If you turn off spacing with the smudge tool, this is interesting, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make it so that if you move slowly, okay, you're going to have tighter spacing, but if you move quickly, you're gonna have broader spacing. See that, isn't that interesting? You can see the evidence of that. So if I go fast in this direction, fast in that direction, fast, fast, okay, that increased spacing means I get smudging that isn't quite as soft or blurry. Pro tip for you. Moving on. All right, what else do we have? Let's check it out. We have interweave. Well, why is it called that? Check it out, very easy. Very easy to understand because you have edges that are really clean and easy to control, okay? But the interior of the mark you make is gonna have this cool weaving line work kind of pattern to it. And what I like this for is doing just things like this. Hello. Look at that. That looks so cool. What do you think about that, gang? So, um, just for creating texture and things like that, it's great, but also for doing lettering um, and so on. Try things like this. Try doing a coil. Start in the middle and coil your way out. And look what happens, the density of it, okay, as you move out. You see how dense that is in the middle, right? You can just whoo, get super dense. But that really is an interesting effect, and there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Sky's the limit, just use your creativity. Gibberish is exactly what you think it is. This, this brush makes no sense. Look at this. Okay, now I use this here. Let's go ahead and check out evidence of it. Do you see it right there? There's a little piece of gibberish. Here's a bunch of gibberish for the tree foliage up there, the leaves, okay? A lot of gibberish there. Um, so you may think, well, I don't know why I would use this. Now I can just say to you, oh, you, you can use it for all kinds of things. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, so for example, I go back to that new painter. We go ahead and give ourselves a little tree trunk. Okay. Like so. And then we say, yeah, you know, it'd be nice would be to have some foliage up there and grab that gibberish brush and just do this, just start adding it. And as far as, you know, a sort of graphic approach to suggesting silhouette of a tree, I don't think you can go wrong with this. Okay, see that? And if you just zoom in, you get all these nice random weird marks with that gibberish brush. And because it's changing its angle as you paint with it so much, you're gonna get some pretty interesting stuff. Little piece of gibberish, says Cody. <laughs> Big dry brush is your blending friend, says Mike. I agree, I agree, I agree. You'll be using this brush today. Cool, nice. You have a dress in those colors, says Evie, from the colors I just did. Nice, you do. The 90s colors, as Cody says, cool. Alrighty, so let's uh, go ahead and move on to the Geo Foliage Brush. We were talking about foliage a moment ago. Why don't we just do this? We'll come back here, we'll undo what I just did with the foliage, and we'll instead paint it with the Geo Foliage Brush. After all, it's in the name. Look at this. Da, 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 da. Isn't that nice? Why is it called Geo Foliage? Look at those triangles. Triangles galore. Okay. But also, it's foliagey. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Very fun. Lots of color dynamics in play there. If I go ahead and add another color and then paint with it. You may be wondering, how are you achieving those light colors? How are you achieving those light colors? Look at the color dynamics, okay? And you'll see there's a lot of brightness jitter right there, quite a bit. But here's something you don't often see with color dynamics that I've employed in this brush, and it's this. Foreground background jitter is set to 50%. What does that mean? It means I'm using two colors to paint with, the foreground and the background color. And so we're bouncing between red and white and everything in between there, and that's how you're getting this result. So let's try something. Let's take that background color and let's make it a nice blue, okay? Now what do you think is gonna happen if I use medium pressure and just paint with it? Aha, uh -huh. 
purple, purple, purple. Because we're getting that foreground, background jitter happening when we paint with it. So here you have a lot of cool possibilities, right? You can use both colors at once. You can decide that if you're going to be painting some foliage, maybe um, you want to use green. And you want one green to be really, really cool and really dark. And one green to be really, really warm and really light, like this, OK? And between those two colors, as you paint, this is what you're going to get. Pretty lovely. See that? So we're getting more specific with how we control what the colors are doing with our color jitter by doing things like this, using foreground background and then using some control with them. Pretty cool. Excelente. All right. There's your friend, the geo foliage. Back to the ink bumper. This one, look at this. One side, all right, is going to give you these bumpy bits. See all those little bumps? Okay. The other side is teeny tiny bit bumpy, but not nearly so much. Now, depending on which direction you draw, top to bottom, bottom to top, you can control which side is going to have those bumps. Okay. So if you want to draw a circle and you want the bumps on the inside, right, you draw counterclockwise. If I draw clockwise, the bumps are on the outside. So once you get used to this and know what it's going to do, you can do some pretty cool stuff with this brush. Now, as, of, as I often do, I make these brush stamps quite large. So even though this is an inking tool and it's set at 60 pixels, and of course you can do some really nice fine line work with it, etc. Don't forget, like I said before, you can make things big. So let's go ahead and bump that thing up to 400 pixels. Ooh. Now I can still go super fine with it, but look how big I can get with those marks. All of a sudden, you get some different interesting possibilities with textural elements and, and whatnot. Robert says, nice to make rocks with it. Sure. Agree. Thank you, Peter. You say I do good treat. I appreciate that. Uh, grass, absolutely. Sure, 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 sure. Mike, look at that. It's, you know, just lay in a little something on the bottom and then boom, 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 over the top. Okay, we'll go a little bit uh, darker here and just. Boom, 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 boom. Just cut across like that. Pretty nifty. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So, Experiment, experiment, experiment. The great thing about Command Z, you can just do whatever you want. You've got endless layers. Python, this one is aptly named. There you go. Don't know what else to say about it. Like a Python, isn't it? You know, snake skin. And there we are with our nice snaky snake right there. And that is the Python brush. Definitely one of the weirder brushes I've made. I had those boa brushes from last time around, and I just thought, man, I got to keep trying to make some of these interesting interior patterns with the brushes. Um, and uh, that's what I came up with here. Now the mamba is, is similar. You'll see what happens with that. Let's go ahead and draw with that. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that fun? Look at that. That is a fun thing to do. Sometimes you don't even care about painting anything specific with these kinds of brushes. You know, you just want to make patterns. So you can just start drawing on your canvas and just do stuff like this. You know, fill in the space with this brush. Just fill it all in. Keep drawing in and out of these empty areas. Okay. And again, because of the random nature of a lot of the mark making. Um, nothing about this will feel samey. Like a lot of the uh, other folks' brushes out there, gang. Not to, I'm not throwing shade or anything, but I do like it when a brush can do something that really is sort of unpredictable and um, doesn't feel so patterned. Look at that. Isn't that fun? What a cool pattern. Who knows what you could do with things like this? You could use Pattern Preview. Are you a fan of Pattern Preview? If you're not, you're missing out. Kyle, what are you talking about? Look at this, gang. Go to View, Pattern Preview. Let's zoom out for a moment. And, oh my goodness. What? I want to make a perfect 
seamless tiling pattern. I used to have to do all this crazy math and divide my canvas up into four even even parts and like try and plot it out and make things align. Oh, not anymore, gang. Look at this. There is my perfect seamless tiling pattern. And the tile itself that I need to save and remember is already here. If I turn off pattern preview, there's the image I need to save. I just take that, I save it as a, as a pattern tile. You go over here, you go to edit, define pattern, and that'll save that tile for you. And you're off to the races. Go sell it for millions of dollars over on Spoonflower. Spoonflower, you just got some free promotion. Hope you're gonna send me some cool stuff. I'm waiting for it. Sprout ground. We're down to the last three here and they are all brushes for showing a little bit of ground foliage and things like that. See this? Isn't that fun? So as usual, I don't want them just to be boring. So what I've done is I've added um, these subtractive elements here where uh, basically as you're painting along with the brush, okay, little bits and pieces are getting removed. And that just makes it more fun to do your ground cover stuff. Less pressure means smaller sprouts. Okay, more pressure means bigger sprouts here in the foreground. That's always the key, right? Go bigger in the foreground, smaller in the background, and you understand what's going on. Go ahead and grab a lighter color. Hit it a few times in there. Bam, bam. And let's look at that. What do you think? Pretty, pretty. That's sprout ground, all right? And weedy, well, weedy is same, but different shape, right? These are more weed-like shapes. And you can do the same thing I just did before. Now, of course, one of the good things about the way things grow out there in the natural world is not everything's always gonna be exactly the same. So you take this weedy brush, make it darker, throw it there, here and there, in between bits and pieces of the other stuff you laid down, right? And that way we have some variety in there, okay? Go super, super light, throw a few little pieces in there. Now you start to really build up this surface, right? And then you have snippets. Well, snippets is not really foliage. What the heck is it? Well, I have no idea what to say about this. It's one of those brushes that just does all kinds of pretty things, but I like to use it for foliage because of this. Let me show you. Go to a nice bright yellow like this. And we go, and now what are we communicating? Little flowers, little, little um, what are they called? Uh, daisies and things like that. Just hanging out. See that? A little smaller as we go back in the background, in the distance there, bigger in the foreground. Um, but that I just think that's so fun to be able to suggest something like that, right? Without being super literal about it, making a flower shape. We wanna be more expressive than that. We wanna be more expressive and this is, this is a way to do it, okay? Isn't that fun? I know these are fall brushes and this feels more summery, but um, you know, change the colors and you've got something else going on. All right, so quick little illustration. We've got just a few minutes. Um, why don't we do something similar to what we had in our, um, our example image? I'll pause and see if there are any questions. Hi, grass brush. Bruce says, come on, Kyle. I don't know what I, come on, what? What was I doing? I don't know. Um, pattern preview. Yeah, pattern preview is awesome. Um, Indiana Jones vibes. Ha ha, Evie's uh, talking about snakes. He does not like snakes. He wouldn't use this brush. Ha ha ha. Um, snakeskin boots. Indeed. Um, uh, okay. Perfect make gravel. Oh, sure, Robert, absolutely. Yeah, th this uh, snippets, you can do all kinds of things with it. You know, hey, don't forget, you have options. Turn the color dynamics up, make it like 40% for hue jitter. And maybe you wanna do some confetti. So just do this, Woo, party time. Isn't that fun? That's so fun. Yeah, um, really, you can just do anything. You all have great imaginations out there. Use them, uh, play around, experiment. You'll come up with something different, unexpected. Um, 
So let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's do a little illustration. So we'll start again with a little background. And to do that, I'm just going to use the new painter. Here we are. A nice kind of a dark sort of brown kind of a base like this. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab, um, actually, you know what, I changed my mind. I'm going to actually do something like this more like. Uh, and I'll cover the rest with that brown. Um, and I'm going to let that like peek through as sort of an under underpainting kind of a thing. Uh, but this is going to be part of my, my, my foreground here. And uh, let's go ahead and let's grab a nice Halloween-y kind of uh, orange kind of a color, like so. And now using the other paintbrush, the grape paint, okay, which has some, remember, uh, that can go nice and transparent a little bit. See that? I'll just paint in the background here. Letting some of that brown show through here and there, here and there. Okay, and there we go. Nice. All right, um, and if you zoom in, you can see how all those textures and things are playing well together, and that makes, uh, makes things more fun. Uh, now, moving on to our, uh, where'd you go? Here's that new painter again. Uh, actually, you know what? I've changed my mind. I want to do something different. I want to go ahead and use this um, asphalt pull. <coughs> Excuse me. Had COVID. It's the worst. Um, two weeks ago and last week. Just now, I've got this cough that won't go away. Good times. Never had it before. I got so lucky. I was just one of the few people who just really, really managed to avoid it for a long time. And then finally my luck ran out, um, but I really, I really was lucky for a long time. All right, so I'm going to have this cat here. And I'm going to take this, uh, this color here that we're using, this, this sort of uh, purpley blue kind of color, and then I'm going to lighten it just a bit like this. And then go in with black, basically, using the same color, uh, same brush, I mean, and just bam, 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 just kind of hit it. Like that. I like that shape. And then I can use the um, that charcoal brush. Grab some nice bright lemon yellow. Put some eyes there. Like so. That's nice and Halloween-y. All right, now we need leaves in the foreground. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little, some tree branches and things like that. Also gonna add a, uh, a moon there. So I'm just gonna mask out this guy. I'm just using my magic wand, nothing fancy. I'll increase the tolerance from my magic wand, should be able to select more color there. Very nice, Command Shift I, inverting that selection. I know I, I very often will paint on just one layer and think people think I'm crazy, but um, I don't know, it's fun. Uh, let's again, uh, oh, you know what would be kind of fun? Be use that inner weave brush and see what happens if I try and paint a moon like that. Let's just do this. around the edge. It's kind of late for those bells. I've got bells ringing out here in the distance. I don't know if you can hear those. Probably not. There's my little moon. 
oh, what happens if I take orange and I kind of carve into it to try and make it a bit more circular? That's kind of fun. I just used my option key to snag some of that orange. That's how I did that, gang, in case anybody's wondering. I'll deselect on that. Very nice. And uh, now for this um, this area here, I want to grab a uh, color. Actually, I've used this brown color here and just cool it off a little bit and desaturate it. Let's see what that feels like. Nice. Let's go back to that new painter. And I want to put in just a couple of shapes there that are going to suggest like some tombstones from the, the graveyard. We're, in, we're doing like a sort of Halloween-y kind of thing here. And you can use the edge for the moonlight, you know, on the, hitting the tops of these if you want, like this. This is obviously like just a quick and dirty kind of way to uh, to do this, but you get the idea. Um, where are those nice leaves we had? Here they are, fall bunchy. All right, let's do this. Slightly lighter, slightly warmer, and just throw them in, boom, 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 like so. Use this same color here so we can keep that pattern going. And then we go a little warmer still and a little lighter still. Make the brush a little bigger and just hit this foreground with a few of those. And then we grab some orange and just do a few little shots like so. few dark shots as well. There we go. And now let's take this nice dark color and use that um, that ink bumper. Actually, you know what? Let's do the let's see what happens if I use the pythons. Maybe this might be a little weird. I just feel like it'd be kind of interesting. Ah, no, I don't like that. Change my mind. It's okay to change your mind. I'm doing this with the inner weave brush, which may seem like kind of a weird, a weird choice, but um, I'm all about those weird choices. This is what I want you guys to do. I want you to play, experiment, and see what you can do. Should always be trying things in the digital painting environment, you know, is, is so good for experimenting and for doing things that you, you know, no safety net, that's fine. And I say that and it's really not true. There's a huge safety net. Command Z, layers. I mean, I'm I'm crazy because I'm working without layers, so don't you don't have to be like me, but um well, yeah, we throw some some uh, nice nice branches in there, okay. And let's go ahead and take that gibberish brush. And what happens if I do a bit of that? It could be like bats or something. Or maybe just add some texture in the sky. I don't know. It could be bats though. I don't know. Is it bats? What do you think? They look like bats. We'll just say they're bats. <laughs> And if you want to get specific, grab your lasso tool and make a few of them look like bats. And if it only takes, maybe it just takes a few to sort of communicate, hey, bats. And people might fill in the gaps for the other ones and decide that they're bats. 
that's a little trick you can use just to fool people. I think that kind of works. All righty, nice, nice, nice. All right, um, we've got the pure chaos. We'll just take some color here and just do this. Maybe it's like sticks. Okay. You can hear me like stabbing at the canvas. Um, my my Wacom has taken so much abuse. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Go over the whole thing with one more brush, and then we're going to be out of time, gang. But we've done a good job. Um, we could use the pop drag, which we could use the asphalt pull. Why don't we use the, let's find something kind of fun. I think I think I kind of want to do this with the geo foliage. All right, so I'll grab a nice kind of brownish color. And oh, let's make the background color sort of like, um, like a dark blue. And we'll just do this. We just go over the whole thing like this, okay, and then we say overlay, soft light, try all these, hard light, ooh, that's kind of a nice, I like that one, hard light's really cool, vivid light, linear light, try these blend modes, ooh, that's kind of nice too, pin light kind of works, hard to decide what I want to do here, overlay, soft light, I think hard light's going to be the winner. Command U, you can go ahead and play with the, the hue and saturation and find something you think really works for the mood, etc. Okay. And there's your illustration. What do you think, gang? Pretty cool, huh? All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for hanging out with me. And, um, you know, it's time to say see you later, but I had a lot of fun. Hope you did too. Hope you learned something. Download the brushes and try them out. And we're going to have a good time with that. Ciao for now, gang.